It is. So with you, uh, again, your parents were, I guess, educated enough and informed enough to know that we ought to just watch this, correct? Correct. And um, when I was 11, they did, actually my father um, was for estrogen treatment, hormonal treatment um, at that age. And that's very common that uh, surgery will be done and then hormonal treatment is done either all through the childhood or at puberty because mm -hmm. that's when the hormones really kick in. Um, but my mother actually objected to mm -hmm. the hormonal treatment because it was known that it was experimental. It wasn't really necessary. I had no health problems whatsoever and was adapting, you know, normally to my female sex assignment. I didn't have any social even assigned problems. Sexually. You weren't even assigned a female. You were just, your parents just said, okay, well. It... Well, I, I use that word as um, okay. just, I was raised female. They said I was female when I was born. Okay. There were no problems with that. So she opted against hormonal treatment. You know, said it wasn't necessary, and I'm very glad that she did. Me too. I, <laughs> we talked about this backstage, and we talked about this kind of at length. There's, I don't think the detail is necessary other than to explain the fact that you are anatomically female. You do have a menstrual cycle. You could become pregnant. Yes. But you have something else that just makes for a little ambiguity. Exactly. And we'll leave it at that. So, therefore, but you chose to stay that way. Yes, and I, I, I'm very happy that I did, but the unfortunate thing is that most children aren't given that choice. Um, almost all children aren't given that choice right now. And um, three years ago, the or parents the parents, exactly, I mean, either we, one. Yeah, we make yeah. a decision and we say, I sat down and I thought, what's best if I, if I have this as a girl? What's best if I have this as a boy? What happens if I don't do this? And they say, there isn't a choice of don't. You have to do. Exactly. And mm -hmm. even if you don't give consent, they will do it. They will tell you, I'm going to do a hernia surgery, and they're going to change the place of where it is. They're going to say, I want to do a biopsy, and they're going to take it away. And after it's removed, you can't put it back. Exactly. You Parents can't fix it. Parents are very it. pressured, very pressured into decisions that they may not want to make, and things are done without consent. Mm -hmm. And that's been coming out. Um, I think that didn't happen because my father is a physician, so you know he played more of a role in it. They gave him more of a role, and unfortunately, they don't do that as they should with all parents. Um, but um, as I said, I've, you know, socially I developed, developed fine, and unfortunately people think, that the reason why they do these surgeries basically is they think, think people can't grow up intersexed and develop socially and be happy, healthy. And you, you always hear, I heard it from the two of you, and I think I've, I even heard it in what doctors have said, what happens when your child goes to school and has to go to the locker room? Mm -hmm. Well, who said that everybody stands around in the locker room staring at everybody anyway exactly. at age three exactly. or four or five or six? Exactly. You're, I must give your age out because I think this is <coughs> not something maybe you can explain also, doctor. You're almost 30. I am 30. You're 30 years old. And when I met you backstage, I was going, there's no way you were 30 years old. And, and societally, we would say that somebody's going to say that she should go even now at age 30 and just be fixed and be one way or the other. Uh, uh, many physicians would give her that recommendation, and I think inappropriately. Yeah, um, I, I have heard things from gynecologists along the way in adulthood, mm -hmm. um, you know, wanting to run different tests, saying I wasn't normal, and um, it was always in a negative fashion. In fact, that's the first time that I did hear any negative references to my bodily differences was from doctors. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, everyone that knew me had, you know, loved and accepted me as I am, and it was from the medical establishment that I first started hearing, you're not normal. Michael Break will be back right after this. Most so true hermaphrodites actually have female chromosomes, but they look male, and they're raised male. Yeah, the majority I want to address of them. something. You just said that um, if there's gross enlargement, use well, the word gross. I yeah. think that's a problem right there. That's used in all the medical textbooks, and that right there displays the medical well, establish establishment's judgment. Montel has seen the pictures be, that I well, showed him of exactly, the Exactly, but, but you're saying that in those cases, even though there may not be salt-wasting syndrome, even though there may not be any risk to life, that there, there must be something done. You said must. Well, now, that is your opinion. No, no. But that is not necessarily not the opinion. child's opinion or the parent's opinion. That's not my opinion. Okay. Let's get that point there for a second. Yes.